All of our amazing customers know that CGX is so good for color exploration, but we've done a video before about it, but this is a slight variation about using CGX for black and white conversion options, right? You know, to make a monochrome image, but to explore some options. So let me show you how that could work. And there's a lot of variations, but let me give you an idea. So first and foremost, I have CGX set up to kind of maximize all the exploratory options. So if you don't know, uh, we have videos about it, but if you don't know, these sliders down here on the Explore tab show us how much potential variation we could get when we start pushing this play button. So lots of possibilities for intensity from very low to very high. Same with saturation, brightness, and contrast. We'll start with that. I've got the uh, highlights and shadows hue angles as maxed out. So 180 degrees on highlights, 180 degrees on shadows. I am not concerned about what hues they are. They're just maxed out to the maximum possible exploration um, parameters, right? Okay, so now here's what I, what, what I recommend. One thing you can do. You can start with like a black and white adjustment layer. Put that out there. There you go, it's black and white. That's cool. You can play with these sliders. If you're not familiar with this adjustment layer, it's really cool. You can play with the sliders to get different looks and you definitely can still do that with what we're gonna do today, but check this out. Now I click back, whether it's on the, the last layer you're working on, the top layer of your, of your latest workflow, wherever you're at, or on the background in this case, click there. So I'm below the black and white layer. And now with CGX, I hit the play button. Okay, so it creates a CGX look underneath the black and white conversion. So if I turn that off, you see we have a look. Right. OK, so with that set up now, no matter what CGX exports or outputs the black and white conversion layer, it's going to make it black and white. But all these potential radical shifts in color and contrast and saturation will affect how the black and white conversion looks. So let's start hitting the play button a lot. There's one. There's another. There's another. There's another, you see that? And it's not just darker and lighter and less and more contrast. It, it's hard to see on the video perhaps, but you'll see variations. Like look, her skin there is very, very low contrast just because of the way the colors came in. There's a hazy look that has a strong highlight, but like a faded shadow. You never know what you'll get. So suddenly CGX is now a beautiful tool for exploring black and white images, black and white conversions that you never know. I'm just hitting play over and over. You never know when something will strike you and you go, oh, I like that or I like that or whatever the case may be. Now, don't forget too, if you're pleased with a parameter of your image, like in this case, I'm going to say brightness and contrast. I'm happy with the original. So I'm going to hit the little eyeballs next to those and turn those off. Now we're still going to get a lot of black and white variations because when you do a black and white conversion, for example, with the black and white adjustment layer and other ways, those colors depending on how they land, if you will, on these variations, could look very interesting in black and white. So we're leaving the brightness and contrast alone. We're going to have just color, you know, the highlights and shadows, hue angles, various intensities and various saturations. Here we go. We keep hitting play. You see how it just kind of like changes the feel in a way that a simple desaturation won't do and a contrast shift won't do. Right. I usually put it on maximum exploration when I do this, you know, with the intensity and saturation or brightness and contrast as well, because in black and white, it can be a lot more forgiving when you have a lot of radical change in color. Those radical changes can be that. But in black and white, they're usually pretty cool looking. So here that's just this is just color and saturation and look at the different variations. We can get very subtle variations until we find a black and white look that really speaks to us. And don't forget, if you use a black and white adjustment layer, for example, you can also tweak things directly there if you want by moving the black and the white, I'm assuming the black and the yellow or the red and the yellow, whatever the case may be, you can change it manually on the black and white adjustment layer. Another thing too, let's turn that off for a moment. Other things you can do if you don't want adjustment layer, black and white adjustment layer, you can just simply desaturate, right? Okay, you have slightly less options because the desaturation layer is just that, but you can keep hitting play and get various options like that. So as long as you have a some kind of layer on top that's removing all the color information, whether it's a black and white adjustment layer, hue and saturation, 50% gray, set the color, all kinds of options, you can definitely do all kinds of cool variations in black and white with CGX. And again, you can also turn brightness and contrast back on and get all kinds of crazy options until you find something that you really love. Just a cool thought. Um, 
This initial idea using CGX for this uh, came from Andrew Basson in South Africa, uh, one of our greatest supporters. He does a lot of cool live streams. You might want to check him out. I think we'll put a link to something of his in the description of this video. Um, but it's just it's just another way to explore and challenge yourself for new ideas that maybe you hadn't considered before. Or if you're just simply frustrated, I want this black and white image, but I don't know what I want. Well, hey, you see GX in a dark layer, uh, excuse me, a desaturation layer and explore. I bet you'll find what you love. <laughs>